problem that we have identified uh, within the society is that Namibia depends on other countries for sugar production. As a result, we end up um, empowering other e uh, uh, economies or other uh, countries economically and really sidelining our own. So we've also realized that we need to create employment and at the same time, uh, a few societal stigma placed on ex-convicts that uh, once a criminal, always a criminal. So our business concept has um, two functions. One thing, the uh, rehabilitation uh, of ex convicts and the other leg of the business is really business uh, operations as usual. So our solution is that we want to curb Namibia's dependency on other countries for footwear, uh, create employment uh, for ex convicts, uh, rehabilitate and reform um, ex convicts by offering uh, offender risk management and public uh, safety approach and also to recycle conveyor belts and tires uh, that we use as shoe soles for our operations. So the market, our market is comprised uh, really of everyone, as everyone wears shoes and appreciate a good, quite a good quality uh, pair of shoes. So our products uh, cater to everyone in Namibia. We have a variety of products for all Namibians. However, our key customers are millennials who prefer quality over quantity. And there's also a huge potential for growth purposes that is now on production of school uniforms. Our biggest competitor currently in the country is uh, Shilongo Netherwear. So we want to be demonopolize um, our main competitor because once we mention leather shoes in the country, everybody thinks of Shilongo Netherwear. So we sort of want to demonopolize that. And uh, also because we our products are cheaper but of equivalent uh, quality, the same as the ones offered by Shimano Netherworks. So STEP will also adopt a reselling scheme to broaden our customer base, which our, our competitor currently does not do. Next. Our marketing strategy, uh, definitely word of mouth. We have our products out there in the society already, and a lot of uh, customers that we currently get, it's people that have seen other people wearing our products, uh, and we have a referral from those that have already bought um, our products. We also want to utilize social media sites uh, by making use of or collaborating with influencers. That is where the world is heading at the moment, as far as marketing is concerned. Uh, we would also be uh, utilizing mainstream media, that is radio and television. We have tried already or tested that and it works perfectly well. However, marketing is very expensive. We will be making use of bulk or push SMSs, uh, we'll make use of um, hard copies distribution. And we'll also devise uh, stake yearly activities like Christmas in October, stake market day exclusively, and factory flow sales that will be holding um, on a yearly basis because we are still running on a sort of uh, trial and error. So we have a lot of, uh, not really a lot, but we have a substantial uh, factory flows that we want to, to offer for sales to the public. Uh, our business model is that our products are very affordable. We produce on trend products and classic and timeless products as well. We offer cheaper products uh, than what is offered by our main competitor. And we'll also be offering wholesale packages for reselling purposes for people that would want to um, create jobs for, for themselves and resell our products. And uh, we have also approached retailers to grant us uh, shelving space in uh, big retailers so that we don't carry that huge cost of um, rental. Our value proposition is that all our products are made from leather. They are cheaper than what is already offered uh, in the market, but of higher quality. We engage sustainable production methods uh, to save uh, Mother Earth. We also create uh, employment for um, and rehabilitation uh, measures for ex convicts so that they become law abiding citizens and really contribute to the economy of the country as anybody else in the country is doing. Uh, Traction so far, stake is generating income but at a very slow pace. Uh, currently, we have produced over a thousand pairs of shoes. 
uh, translating to over 300,000. We currently serve 200 uh, customers and plan on expanding to 10,000 more and really just to become a very known wealth brand in every household in Namibia. However, we suffered a very huge uh, impact when COVID-19 uh, came about in 2019-2020. The business really hit a deep dive, so it's as if we never operated when COVID-19 hit, although we started in 2017. And uh, we want to fill um, the, the, the market with products that are intended for millennials. Our business or projection and scaling is that uh, 2024 we are looking at projecting uh, 500,000 if we manage to get the funding that we are looking for. 2025 we are looking at 800,000 and really just to carry on from there from 2026 um, uh, uh, profiting more than uh, a million uh, dollars and uh, going forth. Scaling, uh, we want to offer wholesale packages uh, to whoever wants to create uh, employment for themselves. Uh, agents that work or that work door to door or that conduct door to door sales. We also want to have distributions uh, in all regions, distribution agents in all regions and establish uh, depot sites. We want to collaborate with uh, influencers for marketing purposes. Uh, we want to enter into consignment stock agreement with retailers and really just intensify our social marketing um, strategies. Recognition and milestones in 20, 2018, we won the Sunland Innovation uh, Works. In 2020, we were awarded the SATEC uh, Trade Related Facility. In 2021, we won the NCRSC Innovation uh, Support Program for Women, and we also managed to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Ministry of Safety and Security as our major stakeholder or partner for um, exploring society integration collaboration purposes. Uh, we also secured a workshop with the city of Wilbrook in Comastal at the Comastal uh, Municipal Industrial Stores. We managed to purchase uh, half of the machineries or industrial machineries that we need. Uh, we have not secured everything because shoe making is really a very expensive uh, exercise. And the capacity that we want to produce, we really need more uh, industrial machinery to be able to produce at a very intensive capacity and integrate as many ex-convicts as possible. Uh, we are still going through a sort of a trial and error because there is no shoe manufacturing uh, industry in Namibia. So we are really just learning as we go, but we have gone through that in 2017 and 2018 when we started. We've really come a long way. We've also established a relationship with um, our suppliers and our company policies and regulations uh, are in place. So we have a very well managed company. Uh, step team uh, is comprised of me, Kuku Angula, the founder. We have the master cleaner for Raichi Nepe. We have uh, three cobblers and uh, one uh, seamstress. That is just the full time uh, team that works for stake letters. However, we do have uh, part time um, or temporary work workers that come in on an ad hoc basis, depending on the, on the work uh, that we have at the time. We want to integrate as many ex convicts as possible, however, with the capacity that we currently have, uh, we are not able to do so. Our call to action is that we want to uh, equip the shoe manufacturing workshop is very costly and uh, production capacity would warrant, in order to warrant a break even can be achieved only with industrial machineries. We are in need of around 700,000 to equip the workshop with industrial shoe making machinery and industrial tools to maximize production capacity. We would also want to purchase um, raw materials in bulk and accelerate um, our production, uh, at the same time intensify our marketing uh, strategy, and also provide specialized leather handling training to all our employees and whoever will be employing in the future. Thank you. Those are just uh, some of our products that we produce. Um, 
All right, thank you so much, Kuku. Um, angels, any questions? Thank you very much, Kuku. Um, I just want to understand around your, your sales strategy, especially in the past. Where did you sell um, and what techniques did you or strategies you employ to make sure that people uh, were aware of your product um, <coughs> and on report it? We had a place, a uh, small rental space in Costa Foot. Uh, however, when COVID hit, uh, unfortunately, we had to, to close. Uh, think for a year and a half or two years. And uh, luckily we were allocated uh, a workshop by the city of Winnipeg. So we are currently operating in Pomastel at our workshop where we are also uh, selling from, we have a small um, container where we sell our products from. And we are also very active on social media. So a lot of our clients we get them from, or customers we get them from um, social media. Okay, but before, um, where did the majority of sales come from? Like through social media or through uh, sales at the shop you had? Uh, how, how did that come, come to be? It's the working clients as we are very visible at the site. The one with at Kusta Foods? And in Comastor. Yeah, Kusta Foods and Comastor. Okay, okay. But you say that uh, COVID affected your business and I'm assuming now you're selling less than you used to sell in the past. We are really picking up now. Are you picking up? Yes. Now? Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, thank you, Kuku, for the for the pitch. Um, I wanted to ask about um, two things. One is that you mentioned that your products are higher quality than those of your competitors, but cheaper. So I wanted to understand how do you manage to produ to produce um, or, or to sell at a cheaper. Uh, price if your products are higher quality because presumably that means the cost of production would also be higher. Um, and then the second question is around sustainability. You mentioned that you um, that sustainability is an important part of your business model and I wanted to understand more about how do you ensure that your production is sustainable. Uh, Alright, on producing higher quality but at a very lower rate, uh, I mentioned previously that we uh, make use of conveyor belts from the mines uh, around the country and also the tires that are non-biodegradable. So the soles of our shoes are both stronger than the soles of the shoes that are currently in the market because what is currently in the market is the traditional soles um, that are not really as strong as the conveyor belt soles. So that is how our quality comes in yeah, compared to our competitors. And your second question was sorry. Um, how do you how do you ensure sustainability of your operations? Uh, the business is a very uh, it, we are managing sustainability uh, at the moment because we have not we don't have a lot of um, employees. So with the uh, capacity or with the production that we are currently able to produce on a monthly basis. At least it's managed. It's, it's, it's helping us to keep the business sustainable because we are also managing our our costs. So you are referring to financial sustainability, <coughs> not environmental sustainability. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Kubu, for the pitch. Uh, my question is, I guess it takes on to sustainability and capacity, which you said is quite you know tight. But you you also made mention of. I don't know if it's ex-convicts or convicts. Ex-convicts. Yes. Ex-convicts. Yes. Could you please? Yeah, I want to hear more about that because I don't think I got the context very well, um, and how that impacts capacity, if at all. All right. With uh, ex-convicts, um, I got to start working with them when uh, I'm in the legal field. So. Well, while I was doing my um, hours in court and uh, filling my diary, I, I got an opportunity to be consulting clients uh, in prison. And a lot of these people, once you <coughs> now leave them, uh, not engaging them anymore, they come back to you in their private capacities asking for assistance, be it monetary or to, find, or to assist um, their family members. So I decided rather that it just 
because I do not really want to be giving money to ex on a on an ad hoc uh, basis. Uh, let me rather establish a sort of a non-governmental organization. Initially, I wanted to establish a non-governmental organization. However, I realized that even if you establish a non-governmental organization, it's a, it's a non-profit uh, making organization and these people would need assistance once once they are released from um, prison. And they have also had uh, their concern that due to the fact that they come out of prison with criminal records, not everybody is willing to employ them, not even their previous employers are willing to take them on uh, as employees. So I then decided to uh, establish a stick, save the ex-convict, so that I can sort of rehabilitate them, give them a second chance and uh, reform them at the same time while they are also sort of transferring knowledge to um, other ex convicts that are not uh, empowered or that do not really, that are not equipped to the type of training that others have gotten in, in, in prison. Because when they're in prison, they are not, they are not just idling. There is several uh, variety of workshops that the government has set up so that at least these people can be equipped with knowledge and training. When they come out, at least they will be able to uh, to create jobs for themselves, but not everybody that is out of prison uh, has that capacity to do so, and they would need to rely on somebody else to provide employment for them. Hence, now uh, STEC, the establishment of STEC is a company at the same time, and also a sort of a reforming and rehabilitative institution and employment creation institution. Yeah. Thank you. So, in, in some ways, you'd say that you would incorporate uh, waste management in your process, right? In terms of the old tires as well as the conveyor belts. Would you say that? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, just a reminder to our audience we do have angels that are tuning in online, and we have a question from one who's joining us from Italy, Ms. Asteria Pirola. Firstly, she says that sustainability is a bit tricky for leather goods. Tourism could perhaps be an entry point. Her question for you, congratulations on your pitch about August 24, the manufacturing factory. What is August 26? Thank you for the correction. Manufacturing factory. What is your competitive edge as far as that is concerned? What sets you apart? You. Uh, what sets us apart from August 26 uh, um, is that uh, I have not, I have not uh, seen them uh, producing strictly with uh, leather materials. I think they do have uh, or they have incorporated materials uh, as well. However, our products are exclusively uh, leather. That is what really sets us apart from 